Hello everyone, Master Xeon 101 here. In this video, I wanted to do a, another type of topology study that I tend to practice from time to time, just to uh, get a better understanding of form and geometry and surface control. And that is cutting a curvy shape in another curvy shape. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So with my default cube, I'm just going to press Q and go under mesh tools and we're going to hit it with a sphere cast. And SphereCast will actually place a subdivision and a cast modifier. And we can actually play with the subdiv levels. I tend to do it through control one, two, three, four, and maybe even five. And depending on what level you go to depends on the amount of insanity you want for this particular test. So I choose level four insanity. And so to start out, we'll use box cutter and I will just draw a box, press B in order to bevel this edge. And we'll just bevel it till it's um, nice and round looking. We don't want any fastening and we'll just press spacebar. And by pressing spacebar, we've cut all the way through. And this is our form so far. If we press Alt-V, we can look at the wireframe, which is exactly as you would expect using this tool. If we were to control click bevel to add a bevel, things would go awry. And this is where today's lesson comes in. Um, I'm a big fan of practicing surface control to get a better understanding of blender and form and how to best control booleans and bevels to get a desired result because sometimes adding these modifiers can seem like magic but a great deal of control is taken into consideration underneath in order to ensure that the result is ideal. So to just kind of show that in action we'll press control A to apply those modifiers. Uh, I chose control A and visual geometry at mesh to quickly apply them and we'll go in edit mode and just begin dealing with things. Typically I would use a weld to clean things up, but instead I'm just going to uh, select this vert and this vert, press M, two last, select these two, do the same, select these two, do the same, I'll select these two, and do a lightning bolt. Uh, in a previous test, in the ex part of the extended cut, I was able to kind of experiment with creating control edges to guide the bevel result, which is something that I've never uh, pondered experimenting with before, strange, and was actually able to solve a problem reducing the amount of keystrokes and control we would need to be talking about. So I'm just showing that in action. Uh, whenever we put the bevel on at the very beginning, you might have remembered it kind of going awry, and that's because the guidance edges of what the bevel is going to be beveling were just all over the place. So we're just getting in there and just making small corrections in order to get things flowing a little better. In fact, we're just making sure that when the bevel comes out, it actually flows in a straight direction. So every edge must flow straight. Anything going awry will definitely go awry. And this is part of understanding bevel itself and just how to control it. In fact, one of the best ways to understand bevel as a modifier is to experiment with bevel as the edit mode function. And now we are set up for that. So just a few cuts, every bevel point of that original box cut was a nail that had to be rectified. And so we can you know, slide things in, get a more um, contour perimeter happening, uh, just me. And then we could start dealing with solving the outside areas too. But really we could, if we wanted to, we could just by lightning bolting across and then lightning bolting through and just select. And I just refer to selecting two points and pressing J as lightning bolt, I don't know, it just seems like a lightning bolt to me, like the uh, lightning bolt of Zeus just coming down to strike between these verts and make them a connection. Not saying I'm uh, into Greek gods or anything, I think they are out of date, like Windows 7. So we look at this side, which is a side that I corrected, and we look at this side, which is a side I did not correct. So previously in these studies, what I would do is select this edge, and then or select this face, and then hold control and select up to here to select everything in between. And then I would press shift tilde, which will give me select boundary loop. One day I'm just gonna have Blender tell you guys about this so I don't have to mention it every time I press it. So we'll press shift tilde and we've now selected the boundary. So by pressing control B, we can now bevel this area and we see that we get a much nicer result. However, we're creating a perimeter here. So what that means is you want to roll one segment in but you want to press P and move your mouse over to the right. In order to get out of this uh, profile edit mode after setting it to one, you can press A and it'll put you back in a regular bevel where you can actually get the spacer bevel out just right. In fact, we can see things went a little awry up here. Let's check that. 
So sometimes there will be some doubles, and those doubles will cause such a situation. In fact, let's really look at this. That one's the double, everything else is fine. So let's try that again. We select this shift tilde, and then we bevel, and we already get our nice spacer in here. And you can see how this side solves nicely. And we can see how this side solved rather disastrously. And this is kind of the bane of curve modeling. And it's one of the things that I spend the majority of my time focusing on. Like typically I start my day with a box cut in order to test in a very linear uh, scenario. However, the next thing is to begin box cutting into situations that are less controllable like you're seeing here. So this is a side without setup, uh, without control in place. And this is basically what the bevel modifier would have given you for beveling such a thing with such disastrous geometry versus what it would give you if you had control. And for this reason, this is why I'm actually obsessed with control. So we can actually press um, Q and control click bevel to add a bevel at this point. And we see that this side looks great and this side does not look great. And instead of actually solving the other side, which is something I did in the extended cut, I'm just going to press Alt X. And instead of new modifier, we'll choose bisect a modifier and we'll just split that to the other side. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is having a good shrink wrap result because now we actually have a pretty good looking mesh here. In fact, we can run the old car paint test for those who just like looking at the car paint matte cap in place. And we see that this area is a little bit of a mess topologically just because of the level of solution we had to solve in order to basically guide this bevel. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is shrink wrap and shrink two, which is a part of hops that has just been getting a little bit more polish every release slowly in the background. So to set up for this example, we'll press shift A and we'll add in a cube and I'll press Q and under mesh tools, we'll set this to sphere cast and I'll press control two or two, three to make it a good shrink shrink cast and we'll select the main shape. We'll select the one that we want to shrink to and we'll press Q and under mesh tools, we'll choose shrink to. And by choosing that, now we've shrink to this mesh. However, we don't want to shrink entirely to this mesh. I am going to, in my control tilde, under sharp options have apply seam check. So whenever I run sharpen, it marks this area with the same meaning that I can press three and select just this area and even press control I and we could just press control G assign it to a new group come out of edit mode and we could just make that the vertex group and so now we're actually projecting to the mesh that we had underneath and you can see that it actually looks a little worse it's lumpy I don't even need to switch to the different mat caps to see this I can just tell so let's press alt H or actually I'm in local mode sorry um, and we'll press um, Q and just shade this as wires so we can see it properly. We'll turn, on optimal, turn off optimal display so we see all the geometry of the wire. And so this is basically what the result is when we shrink wrap it at two. If we lower this to say three or two, we see that it looks worse. And we go to one and it's comical. In fact, if we keep raising it up, you can see that the quality of the shrink wrap is improving. And that's like the moral of the story is that if you want a good result when it comes to shrink wrap, you want to give shrink wrap a good sacrifice. In fact, there's options in shrink wrap to shrink wrap to a subdiv level, or maybe there used to be, but this is just how I prefer to get in and control using shrink wrap in this situation. So I wanted to kind of expand on yesterday's discussion for that, because now that we look at things, uh, if we move this up one, now we actually have a very good looking shape. Of course, we can't go take our bevel further than the boundary that we created. So those are decisions that would have need to have been made at the very beginning of such a study. But being able to get in and get a very smooth result like this without having to quote unquote harden your normals will leave you free to do things like continue box cutting this. I always talk about how these meshes are basically sacrifices. So I will go ahead and turn off sorting and we will just take a moment to just destroy the topology we've created. And I will also go in and under operations, just step in order to create a small bevel in this area. And we see that we're already getting some problems here. So let's look at our face orientation first. Anytime things go awry, that's the first thing I want to look at. And we'll just move that out just a tad. 
And to continue on with this, we can select this and shift click on Smart Apply in order to get a duplicate without the last bevel applied. That will allow us to take this and press um, I to inset it just slightly. Press Control I to select the invert, delete it, and we can go under Modifiers and just add a Solidify. Whenever I'm using Solidify, I always press 2 at the top of my keyboard in order to push the mesh out as much as I push it in. And, you know, we'll just control click difference in order to give it its own bevel level using the power of B step. And so this is kind of one of the ways that I like to get in and experiment with using these tools is just setting up workflows and just seeing um, how I can take these meshes after I've um, perfected their surfaces. but. Uh, the thing about hard ops is definitely that you want to be managing your surface while you're working so that way you don't end up with um, geometric convergences causing issues with the boolean later that will cause you sharpening issues and just a cascade of modifier failure and so our goal is definitely to try to mitigate that in fact we can see that the shading could also be improved for this so i will just go under bevel and we'll just roll the wheel just hold alt and roll the wheel to get the angle to be a little bit more strict and this is our result. So to end this, I will just, you know, material scroll this, maybe press tab to see what material I'm getting. And we're just gonna scroll till we get a nice material. In fact, that one's pretty good. We'll press Q, add camera. This time, instead of pressing GZZ and positioning the camera, which is a nice way to do things, I wanna position the vantage point to look at it right here. And then we can select the camera and move it back. I just like having a, a nice first frame. And so Alt VV, we'll just select how we want to present this shape and we just let it go through. So within 12 minutes, I was able to kind of convey to you guys the uh, type of topological studies I like to wake up and do daily. Of course, these are a varying level. So I may continue this as a series just to show you all the conundrums that I aim to solve someday in the form of modeling, because these are the things that I'm obsessed with most. And I feel that when it comes to getting uh, some of the more powerful hard surface users to transition into Blender, it's something that we will all need to solve on a universal level and make easy in order to convince these users to come in and rep the B3D name. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope this video wasn't too technical or fast or boring. And we'll wrap this up, and I'll see you guys next time.